Hello and welcome to Revit for Boom Training Seminars. This is Session 2, Mass and Family Modelling. Uh, part 1, Conceptual Mass. My name is Patrick Thornhill. I work at the University of the West of England. Um, we have a LinkedIn group if you would wish to join. Uh, search for the BIM at UE group on LinkedIn. Okay, so over to the Revit environment. Subsequently we've looked at projects and um, we're now going to look at families. We're going to focus first on a conceptual mass to sh uh, show you how that environment works and how it is used in the project environment. First off, let's open up a project so we have something to load into at the end. Um, okay, so we're going to use our architectural template. And again, that loads up the standard view and that's fine for what we need for now. Um, to open up a conceptual mass, you can open up from where we just were, but you can also come to the the new, hover over new, and go to conceptual mass, metric mass, open that up. Okay, so the first thing to notice it's is that the environment looks different to the project's environment. Um, ask you to turn on the show button within the work plane area. This whole environment is driven by work planes. Work planes are, you can think of them as imaginary panes of glass or pieces of paper which you can draw 2D elements onto, which then can be extruded or moved out into a, a 3D shape. And I'll show you what I mean. To select, I'm just clicking on the edge where you see the dashed line. And if it's blue, you can draw on it. So let's try and do that. I'm going to go up to my draw environment here and choose a rectangle and just click twice to draw on the floor. Escape twice to come out and then reselect my closed shape. When I when I select a line or a closed shape, I get the option to create a form. So go ahead and do that. That extrudes that shape into a three-dimensional object. At the moment that's 20, um, 20 meters high. So quite a large object. This whole area is uh, 100 meters by 100 meters roughly. So gives you an idea of the scale. Um, okay, I can change that by clicking on the amount there and that will change the overall height. I can also change that by clicking and holding this control icon here, the blue one moves it in the Z plane, the green one moves it in the Y plane and the red one moves it in the X plane. The little brackets in between allow me to move in more than one plane at the same time. So you'll see I can click off to deselect. I was moving a face of the object there, I can also move an edge by selecting the edge and doing the same kind of moves. I can also select a vertex, the corner, and do that kind of move. So you can edit once you've created a shape. So you start off with a simple form and then you work at it and manipulate it to create um, more complex forms. I can edit uh, these objects as well in another way by using some of the modify tools. Um, one of the more obvious ones is if I select the top face, I could rotate that face to, to twist the form. When I press rotate, I get a blue dot that's signifying the center of the uh, face as default, and that's the center of rotation. So if I click once to start the angle, and then I click again to stop the angle, or I can type in that amount, I'll twist the form. I'll do that again, but this time I'm going to pick up using a left click and drag that center of rotation and I'm going to lock it to the corner. This time as I twist I'm going to be rotating around that corner so you can see the rotate works like that. While I've still got the top face selected I'll also show you the scale button. Now this isn't scale as in 1 to 20, 1 to 100 as you'd get on a paper printout. Scale literally here means resize the object. So I'll click on that if you read the command line, if you're unsure as to how to use the command, uh, click to enter an origin. I'm going to grab that corner there as an origin. 
the first input is um, a distance and then the second click is a ratio of that distance so you could either expand the size of it or contract the size of it. I'm going to shrink mine down to get a tapered form such as that. Okay, and you are not limited to creating a single form within this environment. You can create more than one and keep them individual or join them together and we'll look at that now. So I'm going to create another form ensuring that the floor is selected and current. I'm going to create a circle on the floor, escape twice, reselect it and go to create form. You'll see when you're actually using a circle you get the option to create a tube or a sphere from that circle. So let's create a tube. I'm going to pull that up. Modify it a little bit. So it's intersects. I'm going to scale down that top part there so it marries in a little bit better. You can see here that I've got now two forms. They intersect one another but they are not joined. If I go to my wireframe view you can see that they are actually two forms one within the other. So I'm going to shade it. So let's use the join form tool. It's very simple. Select the join form tool. Let's join that form to that form. It tidies up the interface. If I jump to wireframe again you can see that the inside of that tube has vanished. So that's one way of uh, merging forms. Another way of merging forms is to create a void form. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to create another form on the floor. I'm just going to create a rectangle this time. Escape twice. But instead of hitting create form, I'm going to create a void form. Pull that up into that space. And you see that the void form creates a hole into the into the larger mass. Now at the moment the um, void form is is still there and it's this is just a graphic thing. I can select it and I can further manipulate it if I want to. Um, let's take that down a little bit. Okay. If I want to use the cut tool you need a void form to start the cut tool so select cut read my command line select the solid geometry to be cut or the void geometry with which to cut it so I can select my void geometry and that makes the hole legitimate the next question I guess at this point is what is this for? What can we use this for? And uh, to answer that we will load it into the project. At the start of the video we opened a project to load this into so let's load into that project. Revit has enabled show mass mode so the newly created mass will be visible. That's fine. As default Revit has the mass turned off. So I have hold of it by the center of that environment and I can drop it onto the active work plane. Active work plane is level zero. And in this case I can do that again and add more than one object. I'm not going to so I'm going to escape out. Use my quick access toolbar to jump to the 3D view to see the form. Now you see it's a ghost of a form. It's not it's not truly there, it's not um, the same kind of BIM information as you would get in a, a wall or a door, for instance. This can be seen as a scaffold to create um, and guide those more BIM oriented forms. And let's do that now to demonstrate. If I go to my wall tool, let's just use basic wall for now. 
I'm going to make sure though that my location line is finish face exterior so the the form I've created um, defines the outer edge of a building I'm going to use pick faces in the draw tool and that allows me to pick my mass to define what is a wall now at this point in the design process you need to be aware of what is a wall, what is a floor, what is a ceiling and what is a roof. The definitions can often be quite blurred when you've got um, quite a, an exaggerated contorted shape um, but realize that walls cannot be horizontal they must be somewhere in the vertical so some sort of angle and similarly um, ceilings and roofs cannot be vertical they must have some kind of angle so okay I've added some walls to, the, to that mass I'm going to go to my roof tool and use roof by face and I'm going to add roofs to those two planes there I hit create roof when I'm done you can see I've now got roof forms on top of there Finally, I'm going to use the curtain wall system tool where I'm going to select the tower and that face there and hit create system. You see I've created a curtain wall that can be further edited afterwards. Um, curtain wall in is quite a large topic and we'll go into that in a specific video where you see it's quite a powerful tool now at the moment the the form is showing through the walls that's because we chose exterior face uh, we can hide that form that's simple ways to come underneath hover until I see that I'm about to select the mass right click and say hide in view elements that gets that hides that form and leaves you with the desired model I've got a bit of tidying up to do here where my roof and my walls are colliding simple answer to this is to select the roof and pick face Let's see if I just expand that over pick face location faces to top of roof if I change that to face to bottom of the roof, my roof expands up, so the bottom of the roof is being defined by the mass, and that tidies up that interface there. Okay, so that's enough for this video. Please find the next one. Thank you.